News 5 On Your Side presents Kaleidoscope, focusing on people who make a difference in Northeast Ohio communities. Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the broadcast. Good morning, I will say to you, because Vocational Guidance Services trains and places individuals with disabilities for a wide variety of careers. Vice President of Development, Adam Ross, joins me today to talk more about the programs and the services which are offered there. Then we will hear from the casting director, Lillian Piles. She will talk about her career as a casting director and casting people for movie roles right here in Cleveland and elsewhere. I should say. Later on the broadcast after that, Amanda Suffolk and Rob Campbell of Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition will talk about gun safety. Good morning again, everybody. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope in our 18th year, I should add, and so we begin. Good to have you with us, Adam Ross, Vice President of Development for Vocational uh, Guidance Services. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me on today. Exactly. What, what's the role of Vocational Guidance Services? So Vocational Guidance Services, or VGS, as many of uh, mm -hmm. people in the community know us, uh, we're a leader in workforce development. Mm -hmm. We work with individuals with disabilities, all forms of disabilities, mental disabilities, physical disabilities, as well as other barriers to employment. Mm -hmm. And those can include a history of incarceration, um, in individuals who were injured on the job, um, veterans wounded. Um, and really what we work to do is to help them build the skills that they right. currently have, uh, gain additional skills, and then help them on their path to their brighter future through employment. What is it that you produce there? So we have a wide variety of things that we do. We have our vocational skills training where individuals can take part in different training courses. So again, they're building those skills. But we also have our social enterprise work opportunities. So we have individuals at our facility who are producing 100% of the dress slacks for women in the Army, Navy, and Marines. We have about 30 individuals who are working on different manufacturing projects. Mm -hmm. So they're working for corporations like Nordson or Caruso's Coffee. We have about 13 individuals who produce about 2,500 meals a day for kids in local schools. Really, it is the side of, you know, each individual has skills, and yeah. we really look to, to capitalize on mm -hmm. that and help them build their resume. A few years ago, I did a story there uh, for News Channel 5, and, and the story was about the, the making of military of the military uniforms that you supply for many of people, uh, certain sections of, of the U.S. military. Impre it was impressive work to see those military uniforms coming off the assembly line there. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and I think it really hits again at the, the heart of what we do as an agency, mm -hmm. is that as each individual walks in the door, we work with them specifically about creating their path to their brighter mm -hmm. future. We key in on their strengths and their skills and we help them along their path. And so when we see, you know, the individuals who come in, whether making those pants or working in food service or out in the custodial field, you know, it's really the the opportunity that was given to the individual and they've taken hold of it. For so many of the individuals who, who walk through our doors, they've lived in an environment of no. No, you can't. The circle of poverty can't be broken. Yeah. Mistakes you've made in your past can't be overcome. Your disability will hold you back. They walk through our doors and it's an environment of yes. Yes, you can. We believe in you. We'll help you move along your path, we'll help you gain new skills, and we'll provide you with an opportunity to show what you've known inside yeah. you can do mm -hmm. to the rest of the community. You're located there on East 55th Street, have been there in the, in the heart of the city on East 55th Street, and many of the people, as you mentioned, are, are physically or mentally challenged. You have saved their lives. You realize that, don't you? I think we're, we're lucky to play a part in it. I think, you know, the, the great piece of, of what we do is that it's the individual who comes to the table who wants to move down that path. And, and we're very proud to play a role in their successes. And that's really, you know, we, we come from a, a great community of compassionate people who believe in each other and want to see the community as it's a whole grow. Yeah. And we can play some role in that. And that's an amazing thing. And what, can, what are the advantages of other employers? hiring or subcontracting people with physical or mental challenges? I think, you know, there are a lot of misperceptions out in the community about hiring individuals with disabilities or other barriers that, you know, there's going to be uh, too high of cost related to bringing them on board, or perhaps productivity would be down. But studies have shown that it's the exact opposite, that mm -hmm. we bring people in, you give people an opportunity who want to work, 
they're very productive. Mm -hmm. They're there every day. I think when we look at what we have is, you know, a, a workforce that wants to be there. And, and that's a great thing. There's so much that gets brought into the work environment and that improves the general work environment mm -hmm. by giving someone yeah. an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You're located on East 55th Street. What, what's the cross street there? Cause we, so I, we have a location over on East 55th, um, but we also have a location in Painesville. Mm -hmm. We are located um, out over on the west side in the Triscuit area, out in Elyria, and then we also have a site down in Columbus. We'll serve actually about 3,700 individuals mm -hmm. um, each year. We serve people in 26 different counties throughout the state. Um, but it's really, it, our main headquartered building over there mm -hmm. is right in the Midtown area on 55th, yes. on Thackeray. How, uh, how can other employers help you? I think, you know, it's uh, as a 128-year-old organization, um, we still are kind of that, that secret in the community. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the more that people can can open their minds and their hearts to, to serving others and helping mm -hmm. others move forward. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, it's giving people an opportunity. You know, for 128 years, we've had these social enterprise ventures where, again, it's a, a proving ground for people to show the work that they can do. Yeah. You know, to, to come forward and then move more people into the community, create more opportunities mm -hmm. from them. That's really what we're looking for. I think we have some great partners out mm -hmm. in the community, as I've said before. Yeah. And, you know, there's always opportunity for more. Yeah. When we look right now that the unemployed uh, percentage for individuals with dif disabilities mm -hmm. is around 70%. Yeah. That's way too high. We, we, can, make so, we, we can make a significant dent oh. in that unemployment rate among we people can. with disabilities. Well, many thanks for what you do. Adam Ross, he's Vice President of Development for Vocational Guidance Services. And I'll tell you, I did a story over there some years ago, and I was very much impressed with what they do. And still even more impressed by, by talking to you today. Well, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. And tell everybody over there we said hello and keep doing what you're doing. You know, Adam Ross, that you are saving lives. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank okay. you so Good much. Good to see you, my friend. It's great Good to see you. See you. Good to see you. I'll take a break. In just a moment, we'll return with more of Kaleidoscope. Next up on, on, on our broadcast, we're going to talk to Lillian Piles, who's a casting director, about movies. We'll hear with the casting director, and we'll go Hollywood in just a moment. But first, these words are special for you. Welcome back to more of Kale uh, Kaleidoscope. Casting director for movies, Lillian Piles, has vast experience in the movie industry. She started out as an assistant production coordinator and production secretary in New York City, moved to Hollywood, and now is working in Cleveland. She's worked on Waiting to Exhale, Shaft, and The Cotton Club, Spider-Man, uh, Land of, uh, 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 and in The Soloist, uh, to name just a few. And she's here this morning to share with us stories about being a casting director who Ray for Hollywood. Lillian Piles, how are you, Lillian? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. You're from Cleveland, first off. Yes. So, so. Yes. How did, what's a casting director do for movies? Um, I find actors for specific roles for directors. Mm -hmm. um, I find um, extras for specific scenes. Um, that's what I do. I've been doing it for a long time, and mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I have a website, LillianPilesCasting.com, mm -hmm. uh, with all my information. I post jobs whenever I'm looking for anyone, yeah. um, and that's the way I get the word out. Yeah. And that shapes that film. When you see, <clears throat> not only you're not only looking for a face, you, you, yes. you, you're looking for somebody who can, who can carry the load, who can say the lines, yes. if, if there are lines to be said. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Somebody with acting ability. Yeah. Um, and extras also. Can who, you tell the background? You, can you tell right off the bat when when somebody's got it? Yes. <laughs> I like that. Yes, you can. You got it. So sign up. You yes. got it. We'll, we'll call you next week. Yes, absolutely. So, Doesn't take long. How did you get into this? I was a production coordinator in New York and in Hollywood. And when I moved back to Cleveland, um, I wanted to be closer to my parents. They were getting older. Yeah. And I was offered a job to cast extras for mm -hmm. a TV movie mm -hmm. by Alan Schechter. Yeah. I had never cast before, but as a production coordinator, I knew what a casting yeah. director did. So they gave me a list of characters they were looking for and gave me an office and some interns, and we got it done. And then my name got out, and then I got hired by the next one and the next one. 
You've had a lot of experiences. Tell me about one of those experiences that really stands out. I know you've got thousands of them, but tell me about one that really stands out as casting director for four film. I think Antoine Fisher with Denzel. It was it was uh, um, a thrill to work with somebody with mm -hmm. that was so professional and so talented. Yeah. He recognized the um, abilities of the actors here in Cleveland, and he told me, had he known that we had this caliber of actors, he would have done the entire movie from here. So that says a lot. And that that and that film did very very well. I saw that, that film, film. did very well. I saw the premiere of that film. Yes, it did, it did, it did very, did very well. well. Of course, Denzel. I mean, you call him Denzel, but <laughs> <laughs> they call how, him how is it working with Denzel? <laughs> it was it was great. He was just a regular guy. He uh -huh. wasn't pretentious. Uh, he's brilliant. He knows exactly what he's looking for, and it was very easy to, to supply mm -hmm. him with that. Okay, we're going to continue talking with you, but I want to put your website on the screen, LillianPilesCasting.com. More information on everything we're talking about, and there's a phone number there as well, 216-502-2573. Uh, You're looking for... Uh, extras right now in, in, yes. in this new film you're doing, The Last Summer. The Last Summer. Uh, it's a teen movie about kids after they graduated from high school, mm -hmm. what they go through for the summer on their way to college in September. So we're looking for roller skaters, good roller skaters. We're looking for skateboarders. We're looking for country western dancers. And we're also looking for people just to be in crowds. We're looking for all ages. You, you told me before families. we started you were looking for hundreds of people as extras. Right. We need about four or five hundred extras. They won't be all at one time, yeah. but we need 250 here, maybe 300 here. But we need quite a few. So we've got some crowd shots that we... we you, Absolutely. You, large numbers of people. I should say that, that uh, I've auditioned with Lillian <laughs> for, for a role in one of these films yes. a, as, a, as an administrator, yes. an education administrator. And he hasn't made up his mind yet. He, he hasn't was, made up his mind. Yes. Well, yes. Tell, so you're still in call, the running. Tell, I'm in the running. You don't make the selection. You just find the folks. And I then, find the folks and give it to the director and he chooses. Um, but I go through all the auditions. I go mm -hmm. through hundreds and I maybe submit 10. Yeah. Yeah. You and I went to high school together, went to Glenville yes. High School. When did you know that you wanted to get into uh, uh, movies and casting and Hollywood and theater and things like that? When I moved to New York, um, I had a very good friend. Uh, after I graduated from college, I had a very good friend who worked in the industry. He hired me as his assistant because I needed a job and I just fell in love with it. And I now, really did. Is there is there a call? I mean, is there a call? Hollywood calls you. I mean, you you get bitten by that theatrical or that movie bug. Yes, I got bit. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you're still getting bitten. I'm still getting bit. Yes. <laughs> now, when, once the film gets started and everybody's in place, is there a role that you continue to play? Yes, yes. Um, once once I finish the audition process give the uh, actors to the director, he chooses, and then the paperwork starts. Mm -hmm. Their contracts, their deal memos, their Taft Hartleys. Um, I have to check with SAG to make sure they're in good standing. Screen Actors Guild. Yes, so mm -hmm. there are a lot, there's a lot of paperwork that mm -hmm comes with this, which so, is fine. Would you advise people who are interested in, in, in going into into the, the, the on-camera side, uh, the, the actors, to, to join Screen Actors Guild? Yes. And after, I'm, 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 I've been a member for many, many years. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's always good to be in those unions. They protect you. Yeah. Um, they're in, and they must stay in good standing, but it's it's always yeah. well to be in a union. More information on what we're talking about, LillianPilesCasting.com. She's there casting for uh, the last Last summer, which is filming in Cleveland, when, yes. when, when do you start filming? We're, we're filming now. We yeah. just started this past Monday, and we're through to June 23rd. Put they in a good word for me with the director on that little audition I did. I sure will. I think I played a pretty good role. I think you did it a great was job. Hollywood. It was <laughs> Thank you, Lillian. Good You're to welcome. see you, my friend, Lillian Piles. We'll have you back, too. I want to bring you back and talk more about okay, this Okay, wonderful. Day. I'd love okay. to do that. I'll take a break. We'll be right back in just a moment. Many thanks to Lillian Piles, caster and director for LillianPilesCasting.com. Uh, I'll take a break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. Amanda Safakul is director of Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition, an organization that focuses on educating individuals about gun safety and the responsibilities that come with owning a gun. In addition, she co-hosts IonTheTargetRadio.com with Rob Campbell. Amanda and Rob are certified NRA instructors and uh, Alice Active Shooter Response Instructors, and they join me now to talk about their focuses on gun safety. Good to have you with us, Amanda Safakul and Thanks. Rob Campbell. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Brother and sister, sister and brother. Right. Isn't yeah. that, that makes it kind of a uh, novelty, I well, guess. I, bet I don't was, know, or weird. You've gotten <laughs> along ever since you were born and he was already here. Exactly. Well, well good, to, good to have you here. Tell me about what is Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition? What is that? It is an organization that just does firearms education. Um, we found that there's a lot of people who are interested in firearms, but they're not knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And with the ownership of firearms comes responsibility, and so we wanted to, to do what we could mm -hmm. to start to educate and to answer questions and to help people to be able to handle firearms and handle them safely. Rob, is there a lot of questions people have? Uh, we get a lot of questions, some about we want to buy a gun and what do we, what do we need to know, and others that we inherited a gun and what do we do with it or how do we store it or is it worth anything, and uh, we, we cover all those different topics. I mean, I'll bet on your, on your your radio show, uh, IonTheTargetRadio.com. I bet you get some of everything because guns are in the news on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, you got the pro and you got the con and, 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 and everything. Right, and whatever the headline of the day is the topic of the discussion at that yeah. point. And uh, sometimes we, we have nothing and we get a, a nice caller that was, we have a, recently had a guy who was in World War II and he calls in and tells us a couple of stories about him and his army yeah. buddies. He wrote a book, and oh, so yeah. he calls and shares excerpts of yeah. his book. It's uh -huh. pretty cool. Okay. Well, you talk about the historical uh, uh, intent of the Second Amendment. That's among the things that, that, that you talk about. Well, that is in, the, in our Constitution. That is an amendment, the Second Amendment. It's the Second Amendment, and it's 27 little words. And the funny part is, is that people keep looking at it and trying to interpret it or reinterpret it and looking at what those words really mean. Mm -hmm. And so, so part of our conversation at times is what did they mean? What did the Founding Fathers mean? So, so when you do some research, you're actually sitting there reading the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist yeah. Papers because you, want to, you don't want to steer somebody wrong mm -hmm. and you want them to understand how the Constitution comes mm -hmm. together and how important the Second Amendment is. You talk about gun safety, though. That is, that, that's your focus, is gun safety. Right. A lot, of people, a lot of people handle guns and they don't know what they're doing. Is that correct? Right, well, some of it, when they get it, what, what do you do with it when you're not handling the gun? So mm -hmm. do, you, do you need to store it in a certain way? And she negates it to having a, a, a baby to watch it. When you're, you're not using it, you, you can't just leave it alone. You have, to, you have to make sure that it's secure. It, it has to be monitored and yep. secured and put away in a safe place. It comes with responsibility. And so when you look at it, at, as he said, it's kind of like having a toddler. Yeah. You can't leave it with someone else. You can't leave it alone. You can't set it down. You can't walk away from it. You can't leave it in the car. You have a responsibility. When you elect to have a firearm, then you need to, you need to be a responsible adult about it. Yeah, and you talk about range, education, safety. You got seminars directly aimed toward women, correct? We do, we do seminars aimed toward women, aimed toward men, appraisal fairs. We do um, women on the range. We'll do concealed carry updates. We do Alice active shooter response instructors. So to tell people what to do when, when there is something, when there's something horrific in the news, we will try to educate people as to what to do if that were in their community, in their neighborhood. Because people have, an have questions and so. Rob, do you handle the conceal and carry issue? Yes, we've been uh, in concealed carry instructors since Ohio passed the law and uh, we've been uh, actively doing that. Um, I've read, you wouldn't believe how many pages of law I've read is every time they, there's a new update or something having to familiarize yourself with the... Well, mm -hmm. to, to a point that if the sheriff has a question on concealed carry specifically mm -hmm. in that yeah. spin, he will call Rob and in one case he was on a, a conference call with our sheriff, Rob, and the Ohio yeah. Attorney General talking through a question because yeah. it's there's a lot of people who have not read the entire concealed carry yeah. bill and 
We I got a, I got about 15 seconds left. I want to squeeze this in. You, I got an annual fashion show. <laughs> how, how does that work? Gun gun safety and fashion show. You can um, check it out. Actually, Vice did a did a hour long documentary based in Cleveland on concealed carry fashion, and we host a variety of fashion shows for men and women mm -hmm. to show if you're going to carry a gun, how do you carry it? How do you do it safely? And what does the gear look like? And legally. And legally, that's yeah. all. That's all part of it. All that. of that. Well, we're going to have you back talk more about this one day. Uh, I on the targetradio.com. You can get more information on Amanda Suffolkul and Rob Campbell, and they tell you tune in to I on the targetradio.com. Many thanks for being on the broadcast. Well, thank thank you. you. Okay, my pleasure. I'll take a break, and back. we'll be right back in just a moment. Marsha Maccabee of the Urban League. Time now for Marsha Maccabee, President and CEO of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, who always ends our broadcast with a commentary, and I'm certain you've got something on your mind today, Marsha. Sure. Thank you, Leon. And you know, from time to time, we think it's so important as a community partner in this community that we bring up things that we know that are important. They may not be a program at the Urban League, mm -hmm. but they impact our people and they're so, very important. So today we want to talk about something that's happening at CMHA. That, uh, which is one of our community uh, partners. That's, uh, of course, our Metropolitan Housing uh, uh, Association. And basically, they're going to be opening their uh, housing choice voucher program, which is a tenant-based program. And there's going to be a wait list for a lottery. Now, the important thing for our community is the date for that sign-up time is from June the 4th through June the 8th. So it's a short window of time, and we want people to get ready so they can sign up to be a part of that uh, lottery. What must they do? The, the, where, where can they find the, the place to sign up for this? Okay, so there are places to go uh, online. People can do this in the convenience of their home. And what I'm going to uh, give is a website. It's applycuyahogacounty.com. 10mass.com and we're going to put that on the Urban League website okay. to make it easy for people, okay? So come to the Urban League website and we will put that up for you uh, in case you can't get it today and also call the CMHA Assistance Center at 800-741-9922. Uh, if they call that number, they can get more information right. on everything we're talking about. Correct. So we'll, we'll talk about the 800 number, 800-741-9922. And that phone number you see at the bottom of the screen, that's the Urban League number. Correct. If you call the Urban League we'll number, have you still too. have it. So 622-0999. Correct. Correct. And we'll have oh, information yeah. as well. Thank you. Yeah. You are a conduit of information. <laughs> we try to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can anchor this. New, you can do this show without me. <laughs> no, no way, Leon. Oh, no yes, way. you can. That's going to do it for us. For, <laughs> take care, everybody, and Thank be well. This has been a presentation of News 5's Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. Uh, 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 uh,